The next morning, a heavy weight settled in Kwaku's heart as he walked towards his brother's farm. Ever since Neka, his beautiful wife, had become withdrawn, a shadow had fallen over their once joyful mud brick home. Tesfe, the village's richest man, had poisoned her mind with whispers of new clothes, glittering jewelry, and the illusion of love measured in miracles. Kwaku knew he had to act, and fast. His brother, Kofi, a man known for his wisdom and quiet strength, greeted him with a concerned frown. Kwaku poured out his heart, confessing his fear of losing Naka to Tesfaye's manipulative schemes. Kofi listened patiently, the furrows in his brow deepening with each word. There might be a way, Kofi finally said, his voice low and thoughtful. But it's risky, and it could have unforeseen consequences. He then explained the legend of the talking sticks, two ancient artifacts passed down through their family. One stick, imbued with mystical energy, could transform a person into a donkey. The other, its twin, could reverse the transformation. Kweku hesitated. He didn't want to hurt anyone, but the thought of Neka leaving him for Tess Fay was unbearable. In the end, his love for her outweighed his reservations. He agreed to take the sticks, promising to use them wisely. Back in their village, Kwaku found Neka moping by the well. Her usually vibrant spirit had dimmed replaced by a listlessness that nodded him. He decided to confront Tess Fay, hoping to scare him away with a display of strength. He found Tess Fay boasting in the marketplace, surrounded by a gaggle of admirers. Kwaku approached him, his voice laced with steel. Tess Fay, he said, leave Neck alone. Your attempts to break our bond are transparent. Tess face scoffed. She deserves better than a poor farmer like you, Kwaku. Look at her, withering away in that mud hut. Kwaku clenched his fists, anger boiling inside him. But before he could react, a strange figure materialized from the crowd. It was an old woman, her face etched with wrinkles and her eyes gleaming with an otherworldly wisdom. Young man, the woman addressed Kweku, her voice raspy but powerful, your love for your wife is admirable. But true love requires strength, not just anger. Use these sticks wisely, and remember, appearances can be deceiving. With that, the woman handed Kweku a small, intricately carved pouch and disappeared as quickly as she had appeared. Kweku untied the pouch, revealing the two talking sticks, their surface smooth and warm to the touch. The weight of the woman's words settled on him. He knew he couldn't simply turn Tess Fay into a donkey, even though the thought was tempting. There had to be another way. With a heavy heart, he returned home, determined to win Neka back without resorting to magic.